Good morning. How you doing? Good. Good. while still having fun and laughing so it's a good good atmosphere so every thursday starting on september 7 from 7 to 8 30 so i hope to see you there thank you thank you and our choir will be back singing um regularly on that that first sunday after that rehearsal starting on september 10th september is also a time when we're starting a new series i forgot my prop a new series on prayer. We're gonna be kind of following along this with this book. It's by Anne Lamott. It's called Help, Thanks, Wow. And it kind of simplifies prayers into different categories. Prayers of asking for help, prayers of giving thanks. We're gonna add a category of prayers of confession, prayers of sorry. And then the last one, prayers of wow, of awe and wonder. So that'll be the four weeks in September. And we're gonna be inviting you to practice different ways of praying that might be new to you. One of those is sung prayer. And we're going to be practicing that on Tuesdays. You're invited to come at 7 p.m. 
every Tuesday in September. We'll gather probably in a small circle up here in the chancel and we'll be singing prayers in the style of Taizé, which is a community in France. Simone will be playing. We'll all be singing and learning that, that prayer style together as well as taking time in silent prayer. So that's one of the things to mark on your calendar and then keep your eyes open for new ways to become engaged with one another and engaged with God in prayer. Those are all the announcements I have this morning. You're invited to bring all of who you are, everything that you have been thinking about all day or all weekend, to bring it into this space and to let go, knowing that God holds you, God welcomes you, and God is seeking relationship and connection with you this morning. Welcome to church. I invite you to rise in body or in spirit and join in our call to worship. Our liturgist Jenna will be leading us. She'll be reading the regular print and will respond in the bold. Today's call to worship. Welcome, friend and stranger. Welcome, we gather as a community to worship God. To be reminded of the call to be a part of that goodness. Our opening hymn is number 156 in the hymnal, I Love to Tell the Story.
students and teachers and other people who work in schools, who help, who support school nurses, counselors, folks in the library to come up front with your backpack, with another symbol of your learning. Maybe you forgot something, you can just bring a pencil from the pew in front of you and just come. And I invite, we're gonna, let's make like a little pile of backpacks right here at the front up here. And as they do that, I will give you an update on our school supply drive. A couple weeks ago, we packed 20 backpacks, 10 for kindergartners and 10 for middle school students um, whose families are served by the Montgomery County Coalition for the Homeless. And then we also collected enough money to have, you can stay up here, everybody. You're gonna, <laughs> nice try. Welcome, welcome. Um, we raised enough money to have, um, uh, gift cards to purchase 10 $50 gift cards for students to go and pick out their own pair of shoes as the school year starts. If you would like to come up for a backpack blessing, if you have a backpack or a pencil, you are so welcome. But I'm gonna go through here and see whose backpack is this? That is Ken's, how about, say your name as you raise your hand. Whose sweet bag is this? CC, and we have a backpack here. Oh, Sterling, thanks, Dad. We have Noe's backpack. Grace, Grace is also loved no matter what. I like your tags from last year. We have Nikaya's, and whose is here? And Anella's. That is great. If you didn't bring a backpack today, but you're starting school, um, I have a tag for you. So you're welcome to come up and join folks who are standing up here as well. We're going to do, um, we're going to bless these backpacks. We're going to bless these students and teachers and folks who work in schools. Does anybody have something you like to do on the first day of school or the night before the first day of school that helps you feel like you're ready to go? A special thing that you eat or pajamas that you wear or <laughs> go to sleep early. Any, any tips from the congregation here? Something you like to do the first day of school? Oh, a nice new outfit. I liked that too. I liked to pack, um, pack, ask my mom. I, I, my mom packed my lunch until my senior year of high school <laughs> to pack a special treat, something to remind me that I was loved. So we're going to be giving you these backpack tags. If you could take one and pass it on to let you know that you are loved. And they say on them, they say, let your light shine. It says this kid is adored by God and by the people of North Bethesda United Methodist Church. So you can put that on your bag or your lunchbox, or you can put it on your bedside table at home. But I'm gonna ask us to pray. But first I'm gonna ask the congregation, your response is we will. <laughs> will you fill these backpacks and fill the hearts with of these students with your love, your prayers and support? If so, say we will. Let us pray. God of wisdom and knowledge, we pray that you would enlighten by your Holy Spirit those who teach and those who learn. Make the schools of our community lively centers for sound learning new discovery, and the pursuit of wisdom. We thank you for teachers and administrators and all the many helpers who work in school settings. Continually renew and affirm in them a sense of calling to the sacred vocation of teaching. Give them loving hearts, wise minds, strong spirits, and a passion for their students. Fill them with joy, Sustain and strengthen them and give them rest when they are weary. Let them trust the seeds they plant even when they do not see the harvest. Let them hear deep within themselves your words, well done, good and faithful servant. We thank you for each student here, 
for their life among us and the future before them. Lead them in your way, your truth, and your life. Let each classroom they enter be a place of light and life, warmth and welcome, discovery and growth. Give them good friends and let them be good friends for others. Set them at tasks which demand their best efforts and lead them to accomplishments which satisfy and delight. Let them not take failures and disappointments as a measure of their worth, but as opportunities for new learnings. Open their hearts to life and their minds to learning. We pray that you would guard and keep watch over all students and teachers. Bless and keep them. Let your face shine upon them, be gracious unto them. Lift up your countenance upon them and give them peace. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, the great teacher, helper, and friend. Amen. Would you be so kind as to rise in body and spirit to give our students your bold affirmation? You can take your backpack and go back to your seat. You can go back to your seats. You can grab your bag if you brought it up. Your church family affirms you. Thank you. If you have a student or someone at home that you would like to send a backpack tag to, I will leave them right here. You can come and get them after the service. I'll take them out with me and I'll hand them out. Um, but those backpack tags are available. You may be seated. And I'm going to ask if there are other people or places that we are holding in prayer today in addition to our students. The ushers have microphones so we can hear you all. We've got Gail and then Janet and then Gabriel. My friend Cindy has been diagnosed with COVID, so I would appreciate prayers for her health. Thank you, Gail. Janet. Just uh, to thank you for your prayers for our daughter and just ask that you continue to pray for her and our, uh, our two grandsons and all those who are struggling with addiction. Thank you, Janet. We have Gabriel and then Julie. For a, a very good friend of mine who is um, part of the same Bible study group I've been part of for 13 years, um, who suffered a stroke about a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks ago, and then a brain bleed about uh, four or five days later uh, while on a business trip in, in Wyoming. He's in a hospital in um, Utah and uh, love to see him come back home to the D.C. area, restored of health, and uh, just that God would be glorified in what comes of the situation for Joe. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriel. Brian Slyker of BUMC, who has liver cancer and is not going to make it. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Joy. My cousin Mark died very unexpectedly on Wednesday. He leaves behind a wife and uh, a brother, two sisters, and uh, his mother who is in dementia care. So pray for all of the Holt family. Thank you, Joy. Ah, uh, a former member of our choir, Ludmilla. Garish, and her husband has a form of brain cancer, and they're considering a move to assisted living. Keep them in your prayers, please. Thank you, Flora. Kathy. I'd like to prayers for the victims of gun violence. And also I'd like to thank this morning when I was driving over here, I saw several people picking up litter. And I thought we don't realize how much we falls out of our pockets, comes out of windows, people just 
throw down without thinking. But, but thanks to all of them too. Thank you, Kathy. Christina. I'd just like some additional prayers for my father-in-law, Jim, as he is back in the hospital with some complications to his ongoing health problems. Thank you. Penny. Prayers for a very good friend of ours um, who suffered a heart attack last week in New Hampshire. He's um, recovering and we're hoping for the best this week. Thanks. Thank you, Penny. Ken. I ask for travel blessings as I head off to Paris for the next two and a half weeks. Off so. you go. Oh, Joy. I'd like to ask prayers for my granddaughter, Marie, who uh, her, her father died some years ago and she's had a very difficult time and uh, had to drop out of college. And now she's returning to college and much better. And we're very grateful for that. Thank you, Joy. Remind, I'm gonna give you a backpack tag for Marie. We'll get that. Are there any others? Let's come together in prayer. Simone will be playing music under our prayer and then um, we'll join in singing the song that he's playing. It's As the Deer and it's number 2025 in the faith we sing. Let us pray. God, we trust that you hear us, that you hear even the words we have not spoken out loud. We pray for those who have been named today, for Tiffany and her sons, for Cindy, for Gabriel's friend, for Jonathan, for Marie, for Brian, for Ludmilla and her husband. We pray for Jim, we pray for the family of Mark Holt and for Joy. We pray for Penny and Nathaniel's friend. We pray for Ken and Aaron. We pray for victims of gun violence everywhere. In all of this, we give thanks for the helpers for the signs of your love and your hope and your companionship that are all around us. We pray that you would live in us and through us so that we too might be signs of that hope, of new life, of joy and of freedom. Hear the prayers spoken and unspoken and send us out as seekers and as light in this world. We pray in the name of Christ. Amen.
Just before Jenna reads our scripture today, I forgot to send our kids off to prime time with Miss Grace. Anyone who would like to go off to prime time with Miss Grace, thank you um, for being here to have your school time blessed, and you are welcome to go. Thank you. All right, Jenna. verses 1 through 8. To the leader, a maskil of the Korahites, as a deer longs for flowing streams, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul thirsts for God, for the living God. When shall I come and behold the face of God? My tears have been my food day and night. While people say to me continually, where is your God? These things I remember as I pour out my soul, how I went with the throng and led them in procession to the house of God. With glad shouts and songs of thanksgiving, a multitude keeping festival. Why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? Hope in God, for, all, for I shall again praise him, my help and my God. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore I remember you from the land of Jordan, of Hermon, and from Mount Mizar. Deep calls to deep. As the, at the thunder of your torrents. All your waves and your billows have gone over me. By day, the Lord commands his steadfast love, and at night, his song is with, is with me, a prayer to the God of my life. Amen. Our worship today is a little bit different. We have well, we had five volunteers, but Pamela has some health issues and is unable to come and share her story today, so we'll hear it another time. But we've got four volunteers today who will come and share. To close out our National Park series, the prompt was to tell us about a place where you have encountered God, a place that you might go continually or a place that you were one time, a way that you have connected with the holy at a particular place. And so we'll be singing one verse at a time of the hymn, The King of Love, My Shepherd Is. So we'll begin with the first verse. It's number 138. And as we sing this first verse, I invite Christiane, our first sharer, to come to the front. stood up and, like this in front of a church before. So <laughs> good morning. I'm Christiane Aaron Gurren. Uh, and I love the ocean. I actually love sitting on the beach and looking at the ocean. There's something about that huge, vast, majestic, you know, non-ending view, the consistency, the rhythm, the pattern of the waves, but then the, the change all the time, right? Every little, you know, wave that comes in comes to a different spot, different birds are running around, different seashells. I just love that reminder of hugeness and detail. But my absolute favorite thing is watching the sunrise over the ocean. So whenever I have the chance to do that, I will take myself down to the, to the beach and, and watch that. So actually almost exactly two years ago, right after Labor Day, two years ago, uh, I went to Virginia Beach uh, by myself, did a little getaway. I had not yet met the amazing Gabriel, so it was just me on my way. Uh, so of course the first day, uh, I got up bright and early and went to the beach and I had my little beach mat and I had my flask of hot tea and I had my jacket in case it got chilly. Uh, and I got there, it was still a little bit dark, starting to get light. There were maybe three or four other people out on the beach, but way spread apart. 
And of course, the sun did what the sun does. The sun came up slowly. It was gorgeous. It was already awe-inspiring. And then all of a sudden, kind of out of the corner of my eye, I noticed something in the water. <clears throat> it was a dolphin. I'm like, oh my gosh. And then all of a sudden, there was not just one. There was like, I don't know what you call it, a pod, a school, a flock of dolphins. <laughs> but there was a bunch of them, you know, five or six of them. And they just took turns going, you know, along the coastline, bouncing up and out. And I just... I remember saying to God, are you kidding me? This was already so gorgeous, so beautiful, and you had to do this on top of that? I mean, it was just this amazing demonstration of God's extravagance, of his joy, of his taking delight in just the four or five of us that were out there to experience this. Uh, and it was has been a touch point for me of God's amazing love and joy and extravagance. And so what I did that trip, and I've done several times since when I've experienced something like this, I picked up a rock on the beach when I was out uh, walking along the beach after the sun had come up. And I now have a little pile of rocks, but this is my favorite. So pretty much every morning when I'm sitting on the couch with my cup of tea, uh, having my prayer time, I pick up this rock and I hold on to this rock and I imagine myself down on that beach sitting next to Jesus. And it just brings me such peace uh, and comfort to know whatever I face this day, this is the God that is going with me, the God of joy, extravagance, and grandeur. So I'm just so grateful that that's the God that I get to know. Thank you for letting me share that. Thank you. Because Pamela is not here, we will hold her in prayer and we will sing verses two and three now of The King of Love, My Shepherd is. Good morning. I'm Rose Ailey, and um, I was happy to uh, get an extra two stamps for this. <laughs> um, I can prove it. <laughs> so um, the inspiration that had me reflecting or got where I find God, where I feel God, where I feel peace that God is near, from one of the National Park sermons, it came from a source that was very unlikely. Let me just tell you a brief story, and, and, and I think this will set the tone. I um, had some dear friends, we had some dear friends come to our house and they visit us and they like to bring board games. And two, uh, out of the four, two of them are young, young kids. And um, a board game was, the board game they brought was like a mime, Pictionary, charade kind of thing. And so the young girl, she's about 20, she pulled the card and uh, she drops to the ground, arms out, legs out, you know, head to the side with her tongue hanging out. And, her, and the mother said, oh, Death Valley. I'm like, really? He, they figured it out just from, from that little bit that this was Death Valley. So we didn't win that game, by the way. <laughs> so it was the Death Valley that inspired me. Now you guys know, most of you know me, I don't like heat. I don't like the summer. I don't like anything related to it. And so when I came in on my first sermon, which was Death Valley, I went, oh, all righty then. So I could feel the heat. She was so good. Rev Kara is so good at describing stuff, isn't she? You can feel it, right? You could feel the heat. I think I got thirsty. I got warm. I um, could see the sand. It's looking desolate. I'm like, oh my gosh, this is what this is why they call it Death Valley. 
But then she described the pop of color of flowers that bloom it's during a certain time. And I could see this, this, all I was seeing was sand and all of a sudden pops of color. And I thought to myself, that seems to me like a moment of God that pops through a desert. So I started reflecting on this. So, you know, for me, snow gives me a place of peace. I think everybody knows this, but in this area, I, I'm waiting a long time for that. That hasn't happened. But that's where I feel that peace, that pop. Like uh, Christiana, the water, I get to the Chesapeake, I feel it, right? It's there, there's God. But my brain was like, why can't I feel this pop every day? Isn't it there every day? Where is it every day? So I started thinking back, I started to go back on my days. And, um, I'm not trying to be negative, but sometimes my days feel like Death Valley in the sense that there's a lot of stress. I'm thirsty either psychologically or even physically. I haven't drank enough. Uh, there's stressors that come out. There's these mounds of homogenous colors, but they're, they're related to a heat. And I'm thinking, so I know I go through this every day, but where is God? Where's my pop of color every day? It has to be there. So I started to go back and I started to think of times it happened. When does it happen during the day? So I started putting them in my phone when I knew I was gonna be talking about this. So I just wanna share a few of these pops of color where I feel God, the peace of, the peace is there. So I drive Beach Drive to my office. I'm trying to find peace driving on Peach, Beach Drive. But of course I'm on my phone talking to my brother about something stressful when all of a sudden, and it's so funny, we're singing about deer. This fawn, the baby, you know, the little guys, walks across Beach Drive, and I said to Joe, my brother, I said, Joe, stop, and I stopped my car, and just for that moment, the fawn looks at me, I look at the fawn, and I go, and I think back, there was God. There was my pop of color, right? So another time I'm driving Chainbridge, I'm driving again, I'm in a traffic jam. And what do we do in a traffic jam? Come on, let's move. But it's like something tapped me on my shoulder and said, look to your right. So I did. There's the Potomac in all its wonder. And there was my pop, my pop. There was God. God was right there. Um, I'm just gonna give you two more examples uh, because I, they started coming. But this one, these last two were, in interesting ones, I think. Uh, I teach students how to take x-rays. So I go to hospitals to watch them and see how they're doing. I had gone to a local hospital and it was a brand new student. He was working with a patient that was cognitively challenged. And um, I could see the communication wasn't going too good. So I thought, well, I may need to step in here. And then all of a sudden the student, his eyes changed. There was a kindness that came into his eyes he changed his cadence of how he's speaking to the patient and the gentleness of this young student to figure out, let me adjust my communication. I left the hospital smiling because there was another pop. There was God. God was there with that student helping him through. The final example I wish to give you is on this one of the saddest days of my life was um, Christmas Day 2019. Um, my mother was put in hospice. And so we went across the bridge to Delaware and um, got her in hospice. And that night we were all hungry, my brother, his wife, Mark and I, and nothing's open on Christmas night in Delaware, I guess, on Christmas. So we went to, back to Joe's house and he made us a breakfast. It's about nine o'clock at night. And I remember the warmth, I remember the calmness, I remember the moment with great affection during one of the saddest days of my life. And again, I believe that was my pop, my pop of that color that shows up in the desert that's there every day. So I'm, I'm making an effort to try to find that every day. So I don't ever plan to go to Death Valley, but those pop, those pop of colors, the moments I feel close to God that occur, those, that has stayed with me. And I'm trying to look for this in my daily life. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Rose.
Let's sing now the fourth verse as Gordon makes his way to the front. We'll sing the fourth verse of our song here. Returning to recently to South Africa, the land of my birth, and where we have the Cape of Good Hope down south, reminded me of the inspiration and strengthening of my faith in the forgiveness and reconciliation that I felt when witnessing the peaceful transformation of South Africa from an oppressive, racially segregated country dominated by apartheid in 1948 to a democratic society based on justice and franchise for all in the early 1990s. This was led by Nelson Mandela. Mandela became a leader of the resistance movement against apartheid in the 1950s and was sentenced with other freedom fighters to life imprisonment on Robben Island just off Cape Town in the early 1960s. However, instead of languishing in prison, harboring feelings of bitterness and revenge, he devoted himself to clarifying his vision of the future South Africa, which would embody empathy for all South Africans, irrespective of color or ethnic background, and including those whites who considered him as their mortal enemy. While in prison, he learned the language and history of the Afrikaners who had established the apartheid regime in 1948 and befriended his Afrikaner jailers, taking an interest in their daily concerns and family lives. And it's interesting that the Reverend Peter Story, father of Alan Story, who featured in our study of Manor and Mercy recently, was Mandela's chaplain during this time. And I'm sure he prayed about these issues with Mandela, who was raised as a Methodist. With the onset in the 1970s and 80s of international political and political pressures, as well as widespread sporting boycotts, the Africana apartheid leaders and the majority of white South Africans came to accept that the status quo was an unacceptable. They realized that Mandela was the best person with whom to negotiate transformation from apartheid. And he was released from jail in February 1990 after 27 years in prison. In a landmark speech to thousands of people in Cape Town, he declared his commitment to peace and reconciliation and offered a hand of friendship to the white minority while assuring his black and mixed race compatriots that their sufferings and grievances would be addressed. He went on to lead a campaign of total forgiveness and reconciliation, promoting his inclusive vision of a rainbow nation living together in harmony. Jackie and I, who had witnessed the cruel injustices of apartheid firsthand, watched Mandela's inauguration as president in May 1994 on TV from our home in Bethesda, and we were inspired by his humility and spirit of total forgiveness of his opponents after 27 years of imprisonment. This spirit was reflected by Mandela having his chief jailer from the Robben Island prison seated next to him on the stage during the inauguration ceremony. 
During his five years as president, he earned the affection and respect of all races and against all odds, ushered in a period of peace and stability. To me, he embodied the teachings of Christ and reflected the character of God. And he strengthened my faith in Christ's spirit of love, compassion, and forgiveness. And I thank God for his witness. Thank you, Gordon. We'll sing now the fifth verse of the King of Love, My Shepherd Is, as Natalie makes her way to the front. I get to follow all those people. I have to say, last week, Bob described how his family went camping on vacation in a pop-up camper and to national parks all over the place. Well, that's exactly what my family did each summer. I didn't know people stayed in hotels on vacation until I was an adult. My parents love the outdoors, especially my father, who grew up on a cow farm. Dad, Dad's family was too poor to attend church when he was growing up. You had to have nice clothes to go to church, something they were too poor for. And besides, they had to milk the cows and tend to the farm. My father had, but my father did have a spiritual side, and it was a connection to nature and the wonders given to us by God. His dream to become a pilot took him to the Air Force and got him reading a book called Benjamin Lawless by Ernie Gann, a fellow EAA, Experimental Aircraft Association, member. The book is about a pilot that does it his way. When dad passed, we found this passage in a book in his dresser, which pretty much sums things up. Before I rolled over and fell into sleep, I thought of the deep Ernie Gann. His religious beliefs could well be bound up in what he said of the protagonist in the book, Benjamin Lawless. I have a church, Ben answered simply. Protestant, Catholic, or what? None of them, or all of them. I can't see it makes any difference. God's a good friend of mine, that's all. I understand his bounties as well as anybody. I thank him every day I'm alive and for the special things when I think of it, like a good sunrise or a good sunset or a bunch of mare's tails in the sky or a flock of stars say, when you feel quiet in the night. It's times like that when I go to church, and my dad put that in, parenthes in quotation marks. I don't worship the stars for themselves or the sun. I'm just thanking the man responsible for them. Maybe it's wrong to say, but I'm not afraid of the Lord, and I don't want to be. Because you see, I like the guy. I've kept that little piece of paper all these years since dad passed, mainly because it reminds me that even though he didn't attend church, except on Christmas Eve and Easter, he did believe in God and he celebrated in the great outdoors. In my life, I admit to being much more of a spiritual person than an organized religion person. I find being out in nature 
whether it's in my backyard or gazing at my flower garden outside my kitchen window each morning, where I see rabbits, deer, butterflies, bees, birds, or at a national park, or a local park, or even on a golf course. Being out in nature and marveling at the wonders and majesty of God's creation connects me to God. It lightens my mood, calms me, and makes me just smile. In fact, a recent study found that just listening to birds singing can lower your blood pressure and brighten your mood, and it does mine. Out in nature, I can escape from everyday worries and find peace and awe-inspiring beauty. The way I look at it, God has given us nature as a way to connect to him and a way to experience the great vastness and power of his love for us. And for that, I am forever thankful. Thank you. Thank you, Natalie. Let's join now in the last verse, verse six of the King of Love, My Shepherd. to all who took the time and had the boldness to come up here and give a witness. That is part of what we do together as churches. When we have noticed or felt or learned something about God as we share it with one another. So thank you for doing that. Before we take our offering today, I have a great announcement to make. We have been engaged in the process of looking for a new director of children's ministries. Our board, which is our, our leadership structure of the church, had empowered a smaller group consisting of Christina Johnson Pulliam and myself and Olanma Okoji, who's another parent of young children, to be a sort of search committee for our new director of children's ministries. And we made a recommendation to the board, which was enthusiastically accepted. And we are so glad and excited to announce that Sitsi Sutole will be our next director of children's ministries. There's a standing ovation for you happening in the back, Cece. We are so glad. Cece comes to us with a wealth of experience, both in early childhood education and in Christian education here at North Bethesda. She brings a passion and a vision. When she first came to meet with me about this in my office, I had thought we might talk for like 30 minutes and we were there for an hour and a half because it was just one of those times of just saying like, yes, and this, and this. And so we are thrilled to welcome you. We're so glad CC will start on September 1st. And so you have our prayers and you have our immense gratitude. Thank you for coming on board. We will now take an offering. Part of what you give goes to fund positions like tzitzis and ways that we engage with our children and our youth all the way through every age in our community. So thank you for giving so generously to support the missions of our church.
invite you to dedicate our offerings together with the prayer printed on the back of your bulletin. Lord, with the action of this offering, we tell your story, how you have dealt generously with us, how you have met our needs, how you have heard our prayers, and how your goodness is from everlasting to everlasting. Bless these offerings which are given in the name of Christ. Amen. Thank you. I invite you to remain standing in body or spirit as we sing our closing hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory, number 577. today remembering what you have heard from your fellow church family members, what you heard from Natalie about the simplicity and the accessibility of connecting with God, just look outside, or what Gordon said about finding God in a continuing search and fight for justice, or what Christiane said about holding on to a stone and finding a way to remember and connect and ground every morning, or what Rose said about intentionally looking, how it changes our perspective when we go out looking for the ways God shows up, we do indeed find them. So go out with those bits of wisdom, go out looking for God, knowing that God is looking for you, loving you, and sending you out. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.